Hi there, welcome to Moxa Security Talks. My name is Jesse. Today we're going to be discussing about the latest cybersecurity issues, along with the different perspectives from IT and OT on the countermeasures of cybersecurity. Now, we're going to have two experts joining us today. The first is Stephen from TX1 Networks. He has more than 20 years of IT and OT cybersecurity experience. Hi, Stephen. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. I'm so glad to be here. You're very welcome. Now, it is my understanding that in the past 10 years, the cybersecurity landscape has experienced some major changes. Do you mind sharing with us some of your insights on this? Indeed. Um, from 2010 to 2017, we saw different cyber attacks targeting mm -hmm. critical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. However, since 2017, mm -hmm. ransomware such as the WannaCry, mm -hmm has flowed into the OT environment. Mm -hmm. For example, smart manufacturing, smart factory. Of course, digital transformation is a key driver here. Mm -hmm. Since 2017 was a critical year because a lot of cyber criminals, they changed their focus from the critical infrastructure to smart factory. Mm -hmm. Starting 2020, the cyber security landscape has changed. Mm -hmm. We see the industrial target ransom took place around the world. Hmm. We did not see any stop sign about this kind of attack. I mean, that sounds very serious, but what might have triggered this change? Well, okay. The primary reason for this was that previously industrial control system did not consider or even require security measure because they highly depend on air gap. However, factory start to enhance the efficiency device and the system are interconnected, which means air gear disappeared. This means industrial control system are vulnerable. Guess what? Cyber criminal they know this. They can easy to exploit vulnerability. Mm. So what I can say that the OT entity are under attack. They are easy target in this cybersecurity digital transformation wave. I see. So the cybersecurity issue is actually becoming a challenge for the businesses that are in the process of digital transformation. Now, to give us more insight into this topic, we want to invite our second expert, Richard Woods from Moxa. He will be talking to us from the OT perspective. Richard Wood has more than 25 years of experience in industrial automation, and over the past five years, he has been working with OT professionals to address cybersecurity issues in the OT world. So, Richard, can you hear us? Hi, Stephen and Jesse. Good morning. Good morning, Richard. So we're discussing the trend of digital transformation that has sped up and changed people's lives and their way of adopting new technologies. Can you share some of your insights with us? Sure, Jesse. Nowadays, more and more businesses understand that digitization is necessary for them to survive and thrive. In fact, the 2019 Deloitte Smart Factory study found that 86% of manufacturers felt that their smart factory initiatives would be the main driver of competitiveness over the next five years. However, with this increased connectivity comes increased risk from a host of cybersecurity threats. All right, thank you very much, Rich. So Stephen, from your experience in cybersecurity, do you have any recommendations for our audience on how to mitigate the risks? Okay, let me give you an example of cybersecurity mm -hmm. uh, on shelf floor. Yeah. Generally speaking, there are three different types of factory. The first one, traditional factory. They heavily and often use legacy information system. Mm -hmm. Their OT network architecture is not well organized. Mm. Their main priority is trying to survive instead of cybersecurity, which is pretty understandable. The second one, modernizing factory. They will try to upgrade their existing infrastructure mm -hmm. and equipment, which means they need to maintain existing and the newly added equipment at the same time that bring the security management concern for them. The last one is fully automated factory. They invest a lot in automation. Also, their cybersecurity mature level very high. Mm -hmm. They do not to be told how to achieve the goal. 
they have the capability be able to integrate solutions within their OT environment. This is exactly what we see in the market right now, Stephen, because some customers are just beginning to embrace cybersecurity, whereas others are already pretty familiar with cybersecurity and have some comprehensive solutions. So what do you think about this, Rich? Uh, to answer that, I'd like to make three points. First, as Stephen mentioned, OT networks have often been pieced together over years or even decades. Therefore, gaining visibility of the network, its various components and architecture can be a challenging first step. From our experience, we've found that an industrial network management tool that can scan the network and automatically draw out a topology will give OT engineers a lot of useful information, which in turn allows them to develop a solid action plan. Second, as organizations start to take cybersecurity more seriously, the two biggest challenges include network segmentation and deploying practical and appropriate security policies for network access, authorization, and authentication. Standards, such as IEC 62443, can be very helpful in identifying policies that will make sense for your OT networks. Third, as organizations enhance their security features, one of the biggest challenges is that employees, vendors, and contractors often have direct access to the network. This inadvertently allows them to bypass traditional protections such as firewalls and possibly introduce viruses or malware to the OT network. This is where horizontal protections such as virtual patching and intrusion prevention come into play. So let me clarify something. Are you saying that traditional countermeasures are not effective anymore? Not at all. Let me elaborate. In a typical factory, it's common for maintenance personnel and even contractors to have direct access to the factory network in order to perform routine upgrades, maintenance, or troubleshooting. When they connect their laptop to the network, they can inadvertently introduce malware or viruses. In fact, if you look at the main breaches from the past four to five years, most of them stem from human error, where somebody accidentally introduced a virus to the network rather than it penetrating through traditional defenses like firewalls. That is not to say that firewalls are ineffective. They are still a critical part of network defense. Firewalls protect the network from outside attacks and limit access between network segments to minimize the impact of a breach. If malicious code can be hand carried past these defenses by unsuspecting employees or contractors, you really need to build up your network's ability to protect itself from threats that find their way into your systems. On a final note, remember that IT and OT cybersecurity is different. While IT cybersecurity protects information, OT cybersecurity protects critical assets, people, and production processes. In OT networks, the cost of a breach is measured in loss of production, equipment damage, and even human life. Therefore, protecting critical assets such as PLCs, controllers, and HMIs should be a major priority for OT cybersecurity. That's right, safety always comes first. But how do we develop and deploy these kind of horizontal protections? Can you give us some suggestions, Stephen? Of course. Horizontal protection is known as the lateral movement protection in the IT world. Mm -hmm. It is challenging, also difficult, to reorganize the OT network because Network restructuring means temporarily discontinued production. Also, reconfiguring network setting and routing and so on. I highly suggest that our customer should segment their network into different zones based on existing architecture and deploy industrial intrusion prevention system in front of the critical assets to further protect manufacturing process mm -hmm. from malware and other vulnerability attacks, mm -hmm. as Rich just mentioned. I see. Well, thank you very much, Stephen and Rich, for all your great insights. Well, it's my pleasure to share information here. Well, thank you very much again. Uh, I'm sure we've all learned a lot from today's video talk. We've learned about the current situation, the trend in the market, what's happening in the market, and also the three types of factory along with the countermeasures that we could do to prevent us from being attacked. So actually, the ransomware instance could have been prevented, right? That's right. 
I see. So it's very interesting that these things keep on happening, but nobody is doing anything about it. Yeah, of course. I think we should have more conversation in the future, like years.